Welcome to the Thought Leadership Series featuring interviews with some of the best minds in the industry. Today's special guest is popular platform speaker and best-selling author, Don Spini. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and talk show host. In this segment, we're talking about a huge sales power tool called the Impossible to Say No presentation from Don's book, 60 Seconds TS. Don, now we're going to get some traffic off this just because this title is like a target on my back, right? <laughs> uh, wow, to, you, can't, <laughs> you, you, you can't say no to. That's right. Well, I'm into that. If, I, I, if the end game is product placement, I want to hear your presentation. Great, thank you. And uh, understand this, uh, this the, the, the presentation stems from what we've done up to this point and what we call buyer conditioning. If you've been following the series, we talk a lot about buyer conditioning. And I call it the impossible to say no presentation because the presentation comes from the buyer. They've told us, here's how we're going in the presentation. They told us what they need and why they need it. How powerful is it? And they also entered the presentation from a position of high interest. And before I do the workshop on how to do presentations, because I, I really don't tell people how to do a presentation, mm -hmm. I tell them what to watch for, the, the, the trip falls. Because the buyer's in a process. Understand this, this is really important for folks to know. There are three reasons why they'll eject out of this process. Two of them are caused by us, the seller, in the presentation part. So I want to give you more of the warnings versus how to do the presentation and, and what to look for, because it's the opposite of what people think. Hmm. So if I'm, if, I, if you're, if what are the two things that you think are most critical that you want to warn us before we get into this? Good, I fed you that line. Thank you. Uh, there, here's here's how it works. First of all, there's two reasons why the buyer ejects here. One is they don't believe us in the presentation. Our credibility is shot. Now they don't believe us. They think we're dealing in claims. Understand this. The part that controls the presentation, of the buyer is the brain. The brain is very sterile. It wants proof, evidence, and facts. It doesn't want to be entertained. Too many times you try to have an entertaining presentation that doesn't work for the brain. But we will say something and the buyer doesn't believe us. Now, we're not lying. If you're lying, I've got no help for you. Mm -hmm. We're not lying. But the buyer doesn't believe us. They think we're dealing in a claim. But here's the problem. They don't act like they don't believe us. They act like they're believing us. Here's what I look for in a presentation. When I'm doing a presentation, I want the buyer skeptical. I want them asking tough questions. That means it's tracking with them. When I see the buyer get excited about my presentation, they're rejecting. How do I know that? The brain doesn't get excited. If they, if they get excited, the brain is shutting down saying, I don't believe, Don. Let's get out of here. Make them think we're going to buy. Let's get in the car. So I've got to watch mm -hmm. that I want them skeptical and engaged. And when, they, when mm -hmm. I lose that, I'm losing them. I'll give you an example if you need it, but that's what I'm looking for. Well, I'm looking for, I'm trying to think of how, you just gave me the tip off of what to look for. I get that. But now I want to go to the second part, which is, okay, how do I get him so engaged that he's asking these questions? He's really, he's giving me the third degree. Well, you know, people take skepticism wrong. See, mm -hmm. for example, you know, so he's asking me a tough question. Why is it so expensive? Why do I have to do this now? See, we get defensive as sellers traditionally. Mm -hmm. go, oh, oh, well, let me give you a discount. You got to listen to what they're saying. That's how the brain talks when they're in the presentation mm -hmm. mode, in what I call the validation mode. They sound skeptical. They're not really skeptical. It's the brain suppressing emotions so mm -hmm. they can hear this. So when they ask tough questions, they're looking for information. They're looking for answers. Answer the question. Don't get caught up in their tone. The second reason they eject, though, and I haven't covered this, is the presentation is just too darn long. The brain is, mm -hmm. the, again, the unemotional part. We're not unemotional creatures. We like to have emotion. The longer I have, I keep in that presentation, I call it the credibility curve, the lower your interest. So they don't believe us. We have to fix that. And again, we don't have time to go how that happens here, but you're going to have a resource for that. They don't believe us or the presentation's too long. And I want you to look at, as an example, the panel on a cereal box, the nutritional panel. It's designed to get people off that panel as quick as possible. That's the true presentation from the cereal company. But it's easy to sort, easy to find things, because the cereal company knows the longer you stare at that panel, the more likely you're going to say no. So they got to get you off that panel as quick as possible. Here's a, here's a big reveal, and you know, we can take hours to develop this, but folks, that panel on the cereal box is the presentation. If the presentation gets people to buy, that panel would be facing out in the store. It's the emotional connection and interest that's caused by the front of the box that gets mm -hmm. them to buy. That's where we invest our time. The presentation's important, but it doesn't get anybody to say yes. So we have to not lose the sale in the presentation. That's part of buyer conditioning. That's part of the impossible to say no presentation. You talk about proof evidence as part of this entire impossible to say no to presentation. 
What was the proof text that you just gave on the cereal box? It's a great analogy. I like it. Let's just stay with it. Yep. Think about this. Again, you know, if you go back to, to a previous statement I made, because we developed this in, in great detail in the in the in the presentation. Uh, the brain. Uh, look how look how the panel. The, again, I say the, the book should have been. Uh, there's no salesperson in the cereal aisle because I use that cereal box all throughout my all throughout my workshop. Look at how that presentation is designed. It's in black and white. The government doesn't require it to be in black and white. Why is it in black and white on that panel? Because what does black and white mean to us? The truth. It's in black and white. So they know, the serial company, smarter than all of us from a marketing perspective, knows that i got to keep the presentation short and only the facts, proof, and evidence. Mm -hmm. There's, it's not entertaining. The brain doesn't want to be entertained. Look at how that, that nutritional facts label is designed mm -hmm. and think about your presentation. Short, sweet, just the facts, and close. Get them off and out of the presentation as quick as possible. Wow. Well, if you want more information on the impossible to say no presentation and how it can impact your practice, just hop out to our landing page address in the video description. We'll be right back with more from Don Speedy. This is your website. Few people visit, and if it isn't attracting new visitors, it's not doing its job. Now you can drive more visitors to your website through dynamic content and email marketing with Creative One's Social Media Elite. Capture quality leads faster and easier. Engage your visitors with informative articles and videos to boost your online credibility. Plus, stay connected with existing clients and earn more referrals. All content is customized for you. It's time to introduce your website to the world. Call your Creative One sales team at 800-992-2642 or visit us online at creativeone.com. In this segment, we're talking about one of the sales power tools called the Defense Diffusion from Don's book, 60 Seconds to Yes. When I heard this, you know, I had a football imagery come into my mind. <laughs> I'm thinking of deflection, uh, <laughs> light diffusing. When you talk about this from a defense diffusion point of view, this is a key element in your process all along the way. Talk to me about this because I, I was not really aware consciously until I read your book and I said, oh, I get it now. But I didn't get it when I first heard it. Talk about it. Yeah, the, the whole premise of my whole program is when interest is high, defenses are low. And those two forces have to work opposite each other. And in the presentation part, I'm getting ready to close. And see, I, I train people, you have to ask for a decision. But you have to do it in such a manner as to not lose their interest and to turn them off and have them run away. And a lot of people avoid asking for a decision. What defense diffusion does is right before I'm going to ask somebody for a decision, I want to condition their brain and spike their interest a little more because here's what happens naturally in any presentation. And by the way, in the insurance and financial services, more so. When I'm talking as a seller, their interest is going down. I don't care how compelling I am, that's natural. It's called the, the defense curve, the, the defense diffusion curve. It's going to happen naturally. We can mitigate that. But right before I ask for the decision, I want to spike their interest with a very simple tool called defense diffusion. And again, we're not going to be able to go into the great detail here, but here's, there's two types of defense diffusion, and you can almost guess how these would work in your business. One is called a satisfaction guarantee, meaning that if they're not happy, so right before I ask for the decision, if they're not happy, I'm going to put myself at risk in the decision. I'm going to give them something that will help them, help them understand that I'm part of this risk. So I can, I can have a satisfaction guarantee. The, other, the second one is called a, um, no, totally forgot my own word. There's a return to original state. All right. The second one's called return to original state. That's very simple. And I want you to imagine, let's get outside the financial services industry. If I sold you a copier machine, right before I closed, I would say something like this. Steve, if you're not happy with this copier machine, I will remove it return your old one in working order, and refund 100% of your money. You're ready to move on this. See, what I did there is I, I put myself at risk in the decision right before I ask you for a decision. Mm -hmm. That conditions you to go, this must be legitimate because he's taking risk. See, what I want to do is if you're not happy, I'll, I'm asking you to change, but if you're not happy with the change, I want to mm -hmm. be able to give you a statement that will undo the change that you just said yes to if you truly aren't happy with it. And then I ask for the decision. It's, again, it's all part of buyer conditioning. Now, I'm just thinking from a financial or insurance industry point of view. Uh, I have this in my back pocket then. I'm, I'm sitting, I have this ready to go if I have to go down this road. I have to have a, a compelling, uh, like you use the word guarantee, or a return, or some kind of deal. A lot of people used to close on the 20-day free look. Yes. Okay. So I have to have something in there that really can, can really give them some comfort, and I'm actually putting myself out on the table. Now, how many times do I have to go through that? The, this, this sounds like a little bit of risk for me as a producer. 
Yes, you do. And, and you got to think about, too, how much risk you are willing to take. And remember, in the financial services, we can't guarantee necessarily returns or mm-hmm. you know, a, a, an investment result. That's not what I'm talking about. One of the best I've ever heard from a financial planner was this. Here was, here was his defense to fusion. He said, listen, if you're not happy with me, because remember, if you're selling a product, you're already failing. What we need to get people to do is to trust us and to hire us to be their most trusted advisor. So that's all I have to do. I, I just got to get you to say yes to me. But here was his defense to fusion. He would do his presentation and say, listen, if you're not happy with me and my services and how I handle your account, I will bring you in and I will bring in other financial advisors on my time and I will help you interview somebody that is better suited for you. He was putting himself in the interviewer spot to help them pick a new financial advisor. Again, that, that, that shows the buyer, wow, this man is willing to take a risk along with mm-hmm. me. If I'm not happy, he will help me find another one. And he said, are you ready to sign up with me with great confidence? And you understand that we close not for the sake of expect them to say yes. We close them for a total different reason, which we'll cover here shortly. All right. So I just want to make sure I got this defense diffusion then. This is a tactical play on our part. What we're doing is we're offering the client, again, I don't want to say an out, but we're offering them our risk. We're a risk taker now. We're going to be able to, I love your idea. I love that uh, idea. I've, I'm not the person for you. I'm not for everybody. I will find somebody who is suited for you and that will be a good fit for you and your family. So if I say something like that, uh, there, I have probably, I'm thinking of the three basic scenarios we've talked about in another, uh, another segment. I might have two or three of these defense diffusion tactics to be able to bring comfort and solace to the client if they're still antsy or they're a little bit, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're not really willing to sign or hesitant. do a commitment. Hesitant. Yeah. Yes. Defensive and hesitant. Yeah, absolutely. And understand this. It also conditions me as a seller to have more confidence going into the close. It gives me a pathway to the close because when I deliver defense diffusion, that's when I ask for the decision. And we've seen this. Watch any late night television commercial. They apply defense diffusion right before the 800 number goes up. If you don't like this product, return it. We'll give you a full refund, including shipping and handling. Call now. Mm-hmm. So I, I didn't invent this methodology. I'm integrating into the financial service world. Accept some of the risk in the decision, and that they feel that you're part of it, they're more likely to say yes. Oh, when you just said that, I was thinking about some of the commercials I have seen, and I'm thinking, yes, I have a no-lose no lose proposition as the consumer. Right. I might have to uh, go down to the mailbox. That's my time. You know, that I'm gonna have, but yes, if I return it and so forth. But I, I see that. I, I, I just picked that up now. And I think we have to have similar tactical responses so that we can get past that and bring them a bit of solace in the That's sales right. process. Take some of the risk, they'll more likely to, to trust you. For more information on the Defense Diffusion tool and how it can help you build out your business, just click on the landing page address in the video description. And don't forget, you can follow us on social media and visit our website. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next time on the Thought Leadership Series. And remember, keep thinking outside the box.